Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And welcome to this special webinar for the Global Organisation of Parliamentarians Against Corruption. Uh, here is a special side event for the UN General Assembly uh, on anti-corruption, which has begun today in New York. We welcome all our members of GOPAC, stakeholders and friends from around the world, be it morning, afternoon or evening. Uh, due to our strict 50 minute time limit for this side event, uh, which will preclude on screen interaction, we encourage you to post any feedback, comments or questions into the chat function. Uh, we also remind you uh, to keep microphones muted as well. I'm now delighted to introduce the chair of the Global Organisation of Parliamentarians Against Corruption, GOPAC, uh, His Excellency Ahmed bin Abdallah bin Zayed Al Mahmoud, the chair of GOPAC, the speaker of the Shura Council of the State of Qatar. Your Excellencies, the representatives of the regional chapter of Global Organization of Parliamentarians Against Corruption, go back. Your Excellencies, the representatives of the United Nations, His Excellency, the moderator of the session, brother and sister, may Allah's peace and mercy be upon you. I am delighted to take the floor to deliver the opening remarks of this important parliamentary meeting, which is held in parallel with the United Nations General Assembly Special Session Against Corruption, UNGASS. We hope that the meeting comes out with the positive results leading to promotion of the, of the work to combat corruption. Dear brother and sister, we recognize the role of parliamentarians and parliaments in our societies and appreciate their efforts to provide all the necessary requirements for sustainable development, including the preservation of the public fund and monitoring their disbursement with the utmost transparency away from all manifestation of corruption, which constitute real obstacles that delay progress and negatively affect the path of economic and social development. Here lies the role of the parliamentarians who have a strong mandate to prevent and combat corruption. The task engages parliamentarians as part of the solution and not as a part of the problem. The timing of this special session is very appropriate because it comes at a time when humanity is working hard to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. The task requires removing every chance of misusing the power, of misusing the power by those who are in power, who, those who try to escape supervision and illegally exploit public funds. This is because currently large budgets are being dispersed for physical stimulus through numerous mechanisms including task incentives, vaccine supplies, social protection programs, as well as incentives and special stimulus for small scale enterprises. Our organization, the Global Organization of Parliamentarians Against Corruption, GOBAC, 
as the only international network of parliamentarians is dedicated dedicated to combat to combating corruption from this position it calls of the international community to strengthen cooperation and partnership with the parliamentarians to in, to adhere to the international standards against corruption the organization also welcomes the, politi the political declaration to, the, to be issued at the special session of the General Assembly. We had contributed to drafting of this declaration, which we consider as a pledge document by all member states to work together to enhance international cooperation in preventing and combating corruption and uprooting its causes. Brother and sister, I thank you all for your effective participation and consideration. I invite Mr. John Hyde, Secretary of the Global Organization of Parliamentarians Against Corruption and coordinator of this meeting to continue our work agenda. I wish for our agenda and endeavors success in achieving their noble goals. May peace and mercy of Allah upon you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair Al Mahmoud. Uh, I'm now delighted to introduce our first substantive speaker. And uh, this is our chair of the Southeast Asia Parliamentarians Against Corruption Network. GOPAC as a global organisation is divided into main regions of the world and our CPAC, Southeast Asia uh, Regional Grouping, is chaired by Dr Fadli Zon, who's also the vice chair of GOPAC and is chairperson of the Committee for Interparliamentarian Cooperation of the Indonesian House of Representatives. Welcome, Dr. Fadli Zon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon us all. On behalf of the Southeast Asia Parliamentarians Against Corruption, CPAC, allow me to thank the UNODC and GOPAC for convening this important panel and inviting me to contribute our regional perspectives on the roles of parliaments in ensuring the effective implementation of UNGAS. Amidst this most devastating pandemic, in a hundred years, fighting corruption has become an existential imperative. More than 12 trillion US dollar have been mobilized globally in relief packages, while millions of lives and livelihoods are at stake. This leaves us with no choice but to work together in ensuring that the pandemic responses and safety nets for the most vulnerable people are not obstructed by any form of corrupt practices. Addressing corruption must be an integral part of the global, regional, and national pandemic response and recovery plans. The landmark on guess 2021 is thus very timely in providing an even stronger political push for the global anti-corruption movement in this critical period. It is more important than ever to re-strengthen national cooperation, promote increased commitments by the UN member states, and ensure concrete country-level actions. Distinguished delegates, CPAC in this regard is a distinctive platform for parliamentarians to work together, collaborate, and advocate means to combat corruption and advance good governance at the regional level. 
We strongly believe that parliaments hold the key roles in preventing and combating corruption through their constitutional mandates, which become more significant in safeguarding the COVID-19 reliefs for the people. Together, we call for a more robust framework to strengthen Southeast Asian countries' commitment and promote parliamentary roles in combating corruption during and beyond the pandemic. Along with other regional chapters under GOPEC, CPEC has taken part in delivering regional parliamentary dimension for GOPEC's collective contribution to the UNGAS political declaration. At a whole, we demand the inclusion of the important role of parliamentarians within the outcome document. Prior to the submission, we organized a webinar for Southeast Asian legislators to garner stronger political commitments and accommodate regional priorities. Our contribution reflects a shared concern of democracy building process in the region as a prerequisite of accountable and transparent governance. With that in mind, we propose paths for Southeast Asian parliamentarians to strive for a much more open, transparent, accountable, and effective legislative body in their respective countries. We also encourage supports for parliaments across the region to establish, enforce, and strengthen legislative frameworks in preventing and sanctioning corruption. Another priority in the submission also includes an urgent call to work together with the executive, judicial, and anti-corruption communities in combating corruption. Having submitted those regional concerns, we really appreciate the works that have been done by the UNGAS Preparatory Committee, particularly in the inclusion of priority areas derived from various stakeholders' contribution during the consultative process. While CPAC commends the UNGAS effort to ensure an inclusive process in shaping its political commitment, we would like to call for a more strategic and meaningful engagement of parliamentarians in each subsequent implementation. Parliaments must continue to be actively engaged, strategically empowered, and sufficiently equipped to help fulfill all key recommendations in the Declaration. Translating the global commitment from UNGAS into national policy framework requires Parliament's role. However, keep in mind that in the successful implementation is contingent on the national context, social and political situation, and different legal systems. In Southeast Asia, where the status of democratic consolidation varies, parliamentarians must be able to adapt the commitments to fit their national context and substantially meet the need of the people. To support this, CPAC invites future collaboration to reinforce parliamentary capacity in localizing the UNGAS commitments without decreasing its effectiveness or neglecting the international standards. We highlight some strong commitments towards parliamentary engagement in the political declaration including point nine, which commits to promote Parliament's role in managing public finances and budget oversight. Most Parliaments in Southeast Asia have established the Public Account Committee or equivalent audit working groups to strengthen their public financial oversight mechanism. To enhance this shared commitment, CPAC welcomes further effort to integrate parliamentarians in the transparency of public finance such as collaboration with regional financial transparency networks. We also believe that parliamentarians must be included as key stakeholders going forward, especially in the review mechanism, as they obviously hold a crucial oversight role in monitoring of anti-corruption national efforts. Should the UNGAS mandates for a special working group to review its implementation, parliaments must be involved. In a more forward-looking proposal, besides operating at the national and global levels, the follow-up and review frameworks of the UNGAS commitments should also involve regional monitoring mechanisms. 
To this end, CPAC is eager to facilitate information exchange, share progress towards implementation, as well as engage in the peer review and reciprocal learning across regions. Lastly, we call for collective anti-corruption actions to endure well beyond UNGAS. With more than 100 members who are currently in the office across seven countries and four national chapters in Indonesia, Malaysia, Cambodia, and Timor-Leste, our network will continue to foster anti-corruption and good governance cooperation in the region. Distinguished delegates, CPAC strongly encourages fellow parliamentarians in Southeast Asia and beyond to support the UNGAS resolution and take a center stage in assuring its implementation. Let us also ensure that this first ever special session against corruption does not remain a mere talk shop, but instead become a catalyst to advance the ambition in translating grand commitments into concrete country actions. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Tara Makasi, thank you very much, uh, Pak Fadli, uh, for giving us uh, those comments and views from our Southeast Asian Regional Grouping, CPAC. I'd now like to bring in two speakers from APNAC, the African Parliamentary Network Against Corruption. Uh, the Regional African Grouping was the precursor to GOPAC. In fact, in the very, very early days when parliamentarians from uh, Tanzania and K Kenya uh, joined with other colleagues throughout the continent to create APNAC, and this led to the creation originally internationally in Canada of GOPAC. So I'm delighted now to welcome uh, from APNAC uh, two speakers, and uh, first is the Honourable Emmanuel Kwesi Beza, Member of Parliament, Chairman of APNAC Ghana, a board member of APNAC Africa, and GOPAC board member. And then our second speaker from uh, APNAC will be the Honourable Ose Kaya Bensa Bonsu, Member of Parliament, the Majority Leader in the Ghana Parliament, Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, the former APNAC Africa President, and the former GOPAC Vice Chair. I now welcome the presentations from our African Parliamentary Network Against Corruption members. the African Parliamentarians Network Against Corruption. Member of Parliament, as far as public finance is concerned, is supposed to perform a function that we refer to as the power of purse. In other words, financial control. Parliament is the gatekeeper of public finances. And Parliament and parliamentarians will have to scrutinize the proposals that will come from government, in this case, uh, the executive, and assure themselves that the demand of the executive meets the development needs of the people. Then, when you have given the allocation to government, you then immediately thereafter begin to exercise the power of oversight. To what extent is the government, the executive, applying the allocation that's been given to it in respect of the request that they've made? Parliament's responsibility is to probe into this and assure themselves that the country has value for money. And if the country has been shortchanged, could we plow back the extra funding to other use, 
perhaps the construction of schools. I wouldn't say the existing mechanism is working to perfection. It is working, but not to perfection. It's not working to perfection because one, in many of the parliaments in, in Africa in particular, when they have done the allocation to various ministries, departments and agencies, the parliamentarians and committees of parliament don't follow up to see that the, the work is progressing according to schedule. Many of these parliaments will rather wait until maybe something crops up and then in plenary, the speaker may request um, some action to be taken and then they rush to do that, which is not good enough. Committees of parliament should be proactive in the exercise of our oversight responsibilities, the power of peace and financial control is concerned, is that parliaments should be involved in the crafting of budgets. Another best practice is to ensure that we are able to develop the capacity of members of parliament. Uh, we, we attend so many conferences, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, um, we have the Inter-Parliamentary Union, RPU, which is the World Assembly of Parliaments. And we wrap shoulders with colleagues and compatriots in other parliaments. We know what is good for us. Sometimes practicalizing it becomes difficult. But we are in the process. We are in the process of reconstituting committees to make the committees stronger. Yes and no. Yes, because we have, we have unfettered access to these documents. But how to domesticate it is what we have not been very successful at. But we are working hard to the ultimate goal of sanitizing these matters. Um, as I'm saying, generally speaking, the international treaties are good. They are good benchmarks for us. Uh, they provide pinnacles of aspiration that we must not relent. So the international standards set for us are good for us. They should be the ultimate for all of us to climb up strenuously to those levels to improve the lot of the people that we govern. The dividends of democracy should inure to the populace because if we don't do that our people will lose faith and trust in democracy and if they lose faith and trust in democracy the alternative could be disastrous for all of us so we should aspire a proper benchmark to improve the lot of our people for instance we should be building strong institutions including parliament because Parliament is the bastion of democracy. When we talk about democracy, the battle is not lost. We have a bright future. If we hold together, if we bond together, if we band together, compare notes, and then resort to best practices in our respective countries and jurisdictions, and once we are able to break those barriers, the sky will be the limit of Africa. We have resources. Resources are being planted. Of the role of parliamentarians when it comes to public finances and budget oversight, and how, including that of Ghana, uh, are doing well under the circumstances with the uh, constraints that we have when it comes to uh, the fa our resources. Uh, we've, we've been doing well. Uh, the process in Ghana uh, starts uh, with the fact that the executive presents the various budget statements uh, to parliament, uh, which is uh, which will be read, and uh, following that, the speaker will refer the various estimates to subject matter committees, uh, which are looked at uh, from the perspective of professionalism at the various committees, especially where committees will have to scrutinize 
uh, the nitty-gritties and figures that have been presented to them from the MMDs, that's ministry, uh, ministry department and agencies working under various subject matter uh, sectors. Uh, having done that, uh, the entire has to do with the fact that in Ghana, for instance, uh, the, when budget statement policies are read, uh, and the estimates given to the various committees in parliament, uh, it takes just a short period uh, for us to uh, look at it and approve them. Uh, this, this does not allow us as, as, as mem of members of parliament to scrutinize the process. Well, some of the best practices to be emulated by parliament and parliamentarians, and uh, which we still practice us, uh, exchange programs. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, there are some best practices somewhere in other jurisdictions where I mentioned that you have budget office. Uh, exchanges between parliamentarians, between one parliament and the other parliament, should be encouraged where you will go and learn best, best practices. One of the best practices, uh, apart from the fact that you have the budget office, is monitoring evaluation where subject matter uh, committees are allowed to monitor and evaluate what their various uh, uh, MMDAs, that's ministry department agencies, are doing. Um, not uh, waiting till the end when a public accounts committee will come in and subject their reports, that's audit reports, into scrutiny. Uh, when it happens like that, to be able to monitor uh, our various department agencies, I believe, uh, will, will reduce the issue of corruption uh, to the barest minimum. And so, yes, there should be um, exchange programs between best practices, uh, uh, communities, and that of uh, countries that do not have all what it takes to be able to uh, monitor their various uh, MMDs. Thanks uh, to our two, two, two contributions from our valued members from APNAC. Our next speaker uh, was supposed to be the Honourable uh, Ms. Fatima Kostani, who is our uh, representative from GOPAC in South Asia, member of Afghanistan's parliament in the lower house from Gore province. Uh, we've been working closely with uh, Ms. Fatima and uh, members of the Afghanistan parliament this week. Unfortunately, uh, due to bombings in Khor province, uh, the entire phone network as well as data and access, uh, data access has been down. We've been working as late as an hour ago to try and um, obtain a connection, but that has not been possible. Uh, Ms. Fatima Kostani does send her regards to us and looks forward to being involved in the future, the more interactive uh, sessions that GOPAC will be undertaking after UNGAS when we move into the implementation stage in the later half of 2021. So I'd now like to move to our representative from GOPAC Latin America. Uh, Dr. Carlos Alberto Perez Cueves is the vice chair of GOPAC. He's also the chair of GOPAC Mexico and has been a strong parliamentarian in Mexico for many, many years. I now welcome Dr. Carlos to present to us the Latin America perspective on UNGAS. Thank you, Dr. Carlos.
I greet with a special affection all the authorities of the United Nations, of the organization that fight against corruption in the world. In particular, I greet our world president of GOPAC, he, Mr. Ahmad bin Abdullah bin Said Al Mahmoud, a speaker of the Shura Council of Qatar. I also greet our General Secretary John Hine, the main promoter of these works. I greet the Executive Committee and I greet all the parliamentarians from the five continents who participate in this meeting. I am very happy to address you. I am Carlos Alberto Perez Cuevas, World Vice President and President of Latin America and Mexico of GOPAC. It is a pleasure to participate in this meeting of parliamentarians who are concerned about the effects of corruption in the world and of course in the American continent where I am from. I'm writing to you on behalf of all the parliamentarians of America in the framework of the special session of the United Nations Assembly Against Corruption, UNGAS. On December 2018, the General Assembly adopted resolution entitled a special session of the General Assembly Against Corruption, in which it decided to convene in the first half of 2021 a special session on challenges and measures to prevent and combat corruption and strengthen international cooperation. In its eighth session held from December 2019 in Abu Dhabi, it was determined to continue with the work for the United Nations Special Session Against Corruption. Since then it has been working to achieve what is now reality, bring together the party countries, international organizations, organized civil society to together seek new mechanisms to combat corruption. GOPAC has always participated with the United Nations in the fight against corruption. This time could not be the exception. I am pleased that we have this meeting of parliamentarian concern about integrity, public ethics, good practices, and actions that allow us to use the effectively combat corruption throughout the world. Since we were born as an organization of parliamentarians that fights against corruption, COPAC has stowed out for working from parliaments around the world in the creation of anti-corruption framework laws, manuals of good practices for parliamentarians, joint work we organize civil society and with the various international organizations, academies, development banks, and all those interested in the global fight against corruption. In Latin America, we are experiencing a serious problem due to the effects of corruption, the great corruption that undermines nations, affects the rule of law, violates human rights, attacks institutions, and affects the lives of all people. Poverty, social inequality, the incipient democracies, the threats of authoritarian populins in which many of our nations in America find themselves are generators of corrupt acts, public purchases direct to family and friends, diversions of economic, human, and technicians' resources, money laundering. In America, we have suffered serious acts of corruption, the laundering in Brazil with the Lavajato case, the Panama Papers, the corruption generated by the Odebrecht company throughout the continent, the lack of medicines, hospitals, the mismanagement of the health crisis generated by the pandemic 
of COVID-19 show that we were not prepared for the contingency, the one that generate more acts of corruption that we are still suffering from. There is no country in the region that escapes the serious problem of corruption. From Argentina to Mexico, Canada and the United States, we are affected by corruption. Therefore, we must all work to combat it, control it, eradicate it. Her international cooperation is very important to win this difficult battle. Together, it will be easier. At GUPAC, we are convinced that it is necessary to fight corruption in a clear, direct, specific and coordinated manner. Governments, civil society, parliamentarians, international organizations must work hand in hand to make the fight against corruption more effective and efficient. For this reason, I'm glad that on this occasion the United Nations is debating, studying, contributing what is necessary in these works to ensure that international cooperation finds ways that allow it to influence the lives of nations, institutions, and people who deserve to live in countries free of corruption. It is very important to discuss how to strengthen public and private integrity, generating mechanisms for the prevention of corruption, effective sanctions, and asset recovery. It is also important to work in a comprehensive anti-corruption culture where all sectors, public and private, national and international, are involved. After the serious lessons that the COVID-19 pandemic has left, it is necessary to strengthen anti-corruption work. At GOPAC, we are ready to contribute from our position at parliamentarians to make these proposals a reality that we are analyzing today at this meeting in the framework of the United Nations Special Working Session Against Corruption. The parliamentarians of the world, and in this case of Latin America, we commit to continue working in the fight against corruption. For this, we will develop an agenda of virtual meetings and when possible face to face to be able to build new laws, institutions, good practices, integrity handbooks, parliamentary work manuals, transparency actions, accountability. I thank all of you for this opportunity to express our concerns and contribution to the effective and efficient fight against corruption from this global and regional position that I hold as GOPA Global Vice President and President of GOPA Latin America. I wish the greatest success to these initiatives and to the work that will be carried out during these days at United Nations Assembly Against Corruption. In this post-pandemic stage, I want our countries to return to normal soon, that we are all healthy and that we continue working in this permanent fight against corruption. I hope to greet you personally. I will be happy to give you a fraternal embrace. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Carlos, for those uh, warm words. And likewise, we all hope that uh, COVID permitting, we will be returning to face-to-face -face meetings eventually. I'd now like to move across the Pacific Ocean from Mexico over into uh, Fiji, uh, to the Fiji Islands. And I'd like to 
introduce one of our great partners with GOPAC. And GOPAC doesn't exist by itself. Uh, we do need partnerships and we've been very fortunate, uh, uh, not only with UNODC who are hosting UNGAS, but also with UNDP who have been tremendous partners of GOPAC and in particular GOPAC Oceania in the field. So I'd now like to turn for, to a response uh, from the Pacific, from the UN Pacific Regional Anti-Corruption UNPRAC project. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Sonia Stefanovska Trajanovska, the Regional UN Development Program Anti-Corruption Advisor with UNPRAC. Dr. Sonia. Distinguished speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings and many thanks to the GOPAC parliamentarians from different regions of the world for sharing their perspectives on ANGAS 2021 and its implementation. I would now like to share a few insights on behalf of the United Nations Pacific Regional Anti-Corruption Project, implemented jointly by UNDP and UNODC, which would also draw on our continuous anti-corruption dialogue with the parliamentarians in the Pacific Oceania region. Pacific parliamentarians, notably through their prominent engagement with GOPAC, have recognized that corruption is a fierce enemy of sustainable development and poses serious threats to the values of democracy and rule of law. With these recognition in mind, Pacific parliamentarians have been actively advocating for progress in implementation of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, ANCAC, and 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and specifically SDG 16 on peace, justice, and strong institutions. In reaffirming these commitments to implementation of the ANCAC and achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, Parliamentarians have now a key role to play in taking the ANGAS 2021 forward into their respective countries and regions. Our Pacific parliamentarians joined hands with GOPAC Oceania and UNPRAC on the 20th of April this year for a special pre-ANGAS meeting. During the session, we heard variable insights from the President of Kiribati, His Excellency, Tanesi Maamau, then Gopa Koshiania Chia from Tonga, Olor Tusitua, and other parliamentarians from the region. There has been one common denominator in this high level anti corruption dialogue among Pacific parliamentarians. That is the Teyaniva regional anti corruption vision adopted in Kiribati Parliament building in February 2020. The Pacific Members of Parliament also express unequivocal support for the fight against corruption when they adopted the vision. The Pacific Islands Forum has also adopted the Teyeniva vision as the regional roadmap for all their 18 aligned Pacific Island countries and territories. Many of the commitments in Teyeniva vision have been reflected in the ANGAS 2021 draft declaration as well. These political commitments are firmly anchored on ANCAC and SDGs and reflect a united and ambitious vision for corruption-free Pacific region. This vision requires adoption of holistic and multidisciplinary approaches. And as representatives of the people, parliamentarians do have a great responsibility for combating corruption in all its forms and promoting good governance, especially in public life, but increasingly also in the economy at large. Parliamentarians also have a very important role to play in the management of public finances and effective budget oversight, which is becoming ever more critical in this time of global pandemic. This anti-corruption vision and awareness 
is clearly reflected in the words of Lord Fusitua, who noted that in the spirit of the Teyeneva vision, Pacific Gopak parliamentarians are driven by three main goals, namely promoting integrity, establishing transparency in the institutions, and ending impunity. The Papua New Guinea Parliament's Public Accounts Committee Deputy Chair, Honorary Gary Jaffa, also noted that corruption is everywhere, but it will continue to grow if we do not address it aggressively and collectively. He also added that the whole of society approach and political will are required to effectively fight corruption. It is in the spirit of these words that the United Nations Pacific Anti-Corruption Project wishes to encourage the parliamentarians in the Pacific and globally to further step up their efforts to promote and effectively implement the anti-corruption obligation and robust commitments under the international anti-corruption architecture. Angus 2021 is another driving force towards addressing the remaining gaps, existing and emerging challenges and difficulties, and finding more synergies and common solutions that can be advocated and supported by the parliamentarians. I sincerely commend Gopa Koshiania for their advocacy and active role in the preparation and implementation of the Teia Niva vision. I hope that Angus 2021 will help us revalidate the Teia Niva vision and will further inspire Pacific and global parliamentarians to continue forging national, regional, and international partnerships towards the achievement of its noble and important goals. Thank you and I wish you every success in your anti-corruption efforts. Many thanks, Dr. Sonia, for that update from the Oceania region and from the Fiji Islands. Uh, where it's uh, 9.48 in the morning. Uh, we do thank everybody from around the world for attending today at various times. Now, before our, our final speaker, um, I would like to remind everybody the uh, chair of GOPAC will be addressing the full General Assembly on uh, Friday. Uh, when the general debate begins shortly after 10 a.m. And uh, we are very delighted that uh, the UN Office of Drugs and Crime invited GOPAC to host this side event. Uh, GOPAC was an originally set up to ensure the implementation of the UN Convention Against Corruption. And from the very first Conference of State Parties on the UNCAC, uh, GOPAC has been invited to uh, host the uh, forum of parliamentarians at each of the costs. And we're looking forward to Egypt in December. We still, of course, don't know how much will be online, how much will be in person, but GOPAC will again look forward to hosting that. And very much our focus in December has got to be on us looking at how we are implementing the forward-looking commitments in this UNGAS political declaration. I'd now like to turn to, for our concluding remarks, as a representative from the UN Office of Drugs and Crime, but also from the UN Pacific Regional Anti-Corruption Project, uh, Ms. Annika Wides who is the regional UNODC anti-corruption advisor. I now would invite for our concluding remarks for this session uh, from Ms. Annika Wise. Annika.
Thank you, John. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, Bula Venaka, it is wonderful to be live with you today and um, a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much to the GOPAC parliamentarians and all participants from all corners of the globe. A special thank you to GOPAC, um, a great partner, not only of UNODC, but also the UN Pacific Regional Anti-Corruption Project, a joint initiative, as was mentioned by Sonia, by UNODC and UNDP. And it is great to be here to be able to provide some concluding remarks at this side event on Parliament's role in implementing UNGAS. Now, when we look at the challenges and measures to prevent and fight corruption, and also to strengthen international cooperation, parliamentarians have a strong and important voice that needs to be heard. Now, when we talk about political will and leadership at all levels in addressing corruption, when we look to leaders to champion integrity, advocate and implement anti-corruption practices, we also speak of parliamentarians. We have heard from the distinguished panel on the role that parliaments play and other legislative bodies in the management of public finances and ensuring that their capacities to exercise effective budget oversight are crucial. Of course, corruption and its effects are being exacerbated now with COVID-19. And as was said, fighting corruption is an existential imperative now. During the Young Gas, we also, of course, are reflecting on the 15 years of implementation of the UN Convention Against Corruption. And it is for this reason that I wish to draw on the words that are in the foreword of the convention that former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan um, had inserted. And here he spoke about, because this is really the essence of why we're even here speaking today. He spoke of corruption, is an insidious plague that has a wide range of corrosive effects on societies. It undermines democracy and the rule of law. It leads to violations of human rights, distorts markets, erodes the quality of life and allows organized crime, terrorism and other threats to human security to flourish. This evil phenomenon is found in all countries, big and small, rich and poor, it is the developing world that its effects are most destructive. Corruption hurts the poor disproportionately by diverting funds intended for development, undermining a government's ability to provide basic services, feeding inequality and injustice, and discouraging foreign, in, foreign aid and investment. Corruption is a key element in economic underperformance and a major obstacle to poverty alleviation and development. These words are very strong and ring very true today and could even be more powerful, arguably now during COVID-19. Corruption is a local and a transnational phenomenon that affects all of us, all societies, and it really goes to affecting the fabric of our society. Um, we really have to remember that our common commitment is to, an end, to end impunity for corruption offences. And the young gas is an opportunity now to shape the global anti-corruption agenda for the next decade by advancing bold and innovative approaches, scaling best practices, and developing new standards and mechanisms. It will chart a path that promotes innovation, flexibility, and forward-thinking means to implement, yes, UNCAC, but also the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Here in the conclusion, I would also like to make a particular note of SDG 16. This includes an explicit recognition of the need to combat corruption in order to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. In a sense, SDG 16 is both an outcome and an enabler of sustainable development, recognizing that peace and justice and inclusion are critical enablers to achieving other SDGs. If you want to end poverty, ensure education, conserve the oceans, 
you need to use this enabling goal in order to do so. By, without peace, without justice, and without inclusion, the other goals may be difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. In all of this, what has been said and what needs to be highlighted again now is that parliamentarians are part of the solution. You and other parliamentarians across the world play a key legislative and oversight role in progressing anti-corruption efforts, notably now in safeguarding COVID-19 relief packages and addressing the challenges that are being posed, but also the role that you will play going forwards is, is really to help us implement the UNGAS political declaration. This concise and action-orientated declara declaration requires your support and your leadership. As was mentioned, this word, Teniwa, um, a vision that comes from the Pacific Ocean, is a Kiribati word, and it means sail, E and canoe wa. I draw on this word now because it really symbolizes the long journey that we all have together. Um, and really, it talks about how often we think it's the oceans that divide us, but actually it's what unites us. When we set sail, yes, there will be difficult times. There will be raw, stormy and rough waters, but there also will be tranquility. We need to find a balance whereby we can set sail together to ensure that through collaboration, through by working together, through your leadership, by identifying and promoting a whole of society approach, you will be able to champion what is required in order to move forwards. Corruption, as I've tried to articulate and as the distinguished panel has, is really seriously undermining good governance and the fabric of who we are, not just here, but everywhere around the world. And it will continue to take us further off course from achieving the sustainable development goals. It is time to course correct and to stop corruption now. Parliamentarians are part of the solution in this. And I thank you very much for allowing me to say some concluding remarks. And I wish you all the best in the deliberations going forwards. Thank you. Thank you, Vinaka. Uh, thank you, Annika, for those words and your continued involvement with uh, GOPAC uh, over many years in the Pacific and around the world, of course, through UNODC and now with the joint UNPRAC project. Um, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, our electricity is going to be pulled on us in the New York headquarters. Uh, we are a cog of part of the, this wonderful week of the young gas activities. Um, I also would like to mention that on uh, Sunday, GOPAC officially opens its new office, Secretariat in Doha, Qatar. Uh, we were very fortunate to be founded in Canada and to have our secretariat based in Ottawa for many years. We then moved to the Parliament of Indonesia and uh, Indonesia is remaining its, uh, with a secretariat presence and will be assisting us in bringing a fully fledged secretariat and office again in Doha. Now, I understand invites will be sent out online to GOPAC members. I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. We believe UNGAS is going to give us a number of commitments from the 187 member states of UNCAC that GOPAC will be able to hold governments to account, to work with stakeholders, to work with our many friends in civil society, academia, and elsewhere in the anti-corruption community. I thank you very much on behalf of GOPAC and our chair for attending today. We we'll wish you a very successful UNGAS in the other side events and the other activities that are helping in UNGAS. And as a final uh, activity in this online world, 
we usually put up a photo board so we can uh, hopefully see everybody on the same screen. So if you do have a, your video, please turn it on now. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, all our Secretariat staff in Doha, Qatar, in Indonesia, where it was 5 a.m. when we all started this morning. So we thank our Indonesian staff and also Sander in our team in Canada. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll look for the photo board. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much. Thank you to Christos and the team in uh, Angas as well.